Welcome back to KETV's Chronicle with a focus on heart health. CPR and heart health is something that's impacted our family directly. This is us now in this very studio just a few days ago. My wife Kim, Cameron, who's two, and four-year-old Theo. But there was a moment we didn't think we'd get to this spot. This story is from the American Heart Association. It was January 5th, 2021. As I was about to close that door to the back seat, I just remember taking a second look. And he was uh, purple. He was, you know, the strongest color of purple that um, you could probably imagine. I screamed for my wife. He's gasping for air. Can't get any. So my husband got on the phone with 911. 911, where's your emergency? Uh, I have a two-week-old child turning purple. What address are you at? I kind of took him out of his car seat as fast as I could. Kim's holding him, and uh, you know, the, the life is fading away. I have a very vivid memory of holding him and looking at him and being like, this is it, he's dying in my arms. We you know, only get to have him for, for two weeks. I answered 911, and I hear on the other end Bill's voice telling me his baby's not breathing. He's just blue. Two weeks. Turning purple, gasping for breath. He can't, his eyes are kind of rolling back. I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do. We're getting help on the way. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Immediately says, okay, you're gonna need to you're gonna need to start CPR. Do you know how to do CPR? Uh, yeah. We learned it a couple years ago, but in that moment, nope. She starts guiding us through CPR. Okay, I want you to place your hand on the baby's forehead and your other hand under the baby's neck. Slightly tilt the head back and completely cover the baby's mouth and nose with your mouth and then blow two puffs of air. And watch for his chest to go up with each breath. Okay. She just very calmly walked us through every single step. Okay, place two fingers on the breastbone right in between his nipples. <laughs> Push down about one and a half inches. Okay. Pump his chest hard and fast 30 times. Eventually, uh, he started to cry, started to whimper a little bit, and uh, he, he came back. Good job, little guy. We don't exactly know what happened. Uh, their best guess is that he had some sort of virus, that he got some mucus caught in his airway, and he couldn't expel it. His tiny lungs, his tiny airways just weren't developed enough to, to get it out. Um, but they're not sure. I was in such a panic when we were on the phone with 911 that it was very helpful having that calm person on the line walking us through it when I kind of mentally was all over the place. Without a dispatcher, on the other end who knew CPR and knew what to do and knew how to communicate it to a parent in the worst moment of their life. I'm not sure where our son would be today. We've heard about the stories of CPR, the importance of CPR and how it can be life-saving, but what about how to perform CPR? Frederick Montgomery with Nebraska Methodist College is joining us. Frederick, you have been doing this for a few years, correct? Quite a few years, so over 25 years. So, it's, so you it's know about the importance of CPR. Very important, and in my personal opinion, I believe everyone walking around needs to know CPR. So it's critical, and that's why I love teaching it. Okay, we have two different mannequins here because I imagine CPR is different between a yes. child and an adult. Exactly, correct? right. The, the big difference is that adult, there's a few more nuances this. Actually working on adult is really physical, takes a lot of energy and work to perform CPR. Okay, let's learn how to do it. Let's start, let's start on the ground here. Okay. Okay, somebody goes into cardiac arrest or you notice something's clearly wrong mm -hmm. where CPR might be what you need to do. Okay. What's the first step? The first thing I would do is make sure, check the response of the patient. I will get down here, check on him. Sir, are you okay? Sir, are you okay? I look around, make sure everything's okay. I'll assess his carotid pulse, I'll look. 
And if you're available, I'll say, hey, please dial 911, get an AED for us. Okay, and then after that, I will place my hands on top of the chest, lean over forward here, forward, and with the upper part of my body, you rock into doing chest compress. And our whole concept is to push down two inches and five centimeters, okay? Okay, so we have the force that it needs. I understand you also need to be quick about it, right? Yes, you, the main objective when we're doing pushing on the patient's chest, we're trying to do a compression rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. And you also mentioned the most important thing, if before you start, call 911. Dial 911 immediately. And the good thing to dial 911 is I like it because they have a thing. And if you don't know CPR at all, you can still call 911. They can talk you through learning CPR right there on the phone. We all have speaker phones now, right? Great tool. I love it. It's a blessing. Put it right down next to you and start your compressor. If you still forget everything, the 911 dispatcher will tell you everything you need to do. Know that all too well. That's what saved Cameron. Okay, let's go with the infant. Okay. Okay, infants, a little bit more things. Uh, when we're working with children, you have more of a heightened sense of urgency with a child and an infant. Why? They got a smaller body mass. The respiratory rate is a lot higher. So you got to work a little bit more to kind of keep them going. But one thing I love about children, they have a lot of resiliency. You can work on them for a good while and, uh, mm -hmm. before you have any issues with them. Okay? okay. Same thing, working with an infant. Uh, what we do, check the responsiveness again. If this is a witness arrest, hey, baby, are you okay? Hey, you dial 911, get an AED. Okay? And I'll assess him, make sure he's breathing. If he's not breathing and no pulse, I'd immediately start CPR, doing chest compressions with two fingers like this here, okay? And I'm keeping that rate again from 100 mm -hmm. to 120 compressions per minute. So instead of the palms here, with an infant, you're right. using you're two. using a little bit smaller. Smaller body mass, we got a little bit more tools. Now if you're working with another partner, we can do what we call a two thumb circling technique with two hands on the infant like this here and we can work with another okay. partner. I really, when I'm working with an infant, I really want somebody else there. And if you've learned it before, forgot it, it never hurts to retrain, right? No, and nowadays, uh, American Heart Association came up with an uh, app we call Knowledge Booster. Anyone can download it. It's a AH Knowledge Booster. Great little app. It's got everything you need to know about basic life support. Tells you everything. In case you lose your skills, because everybody doesn't do CPR all the time, but my thing is have it clear in your head and what you need to know. And when you go through our class at the college, we make sure we get you that experience that you need. So if you get caught up in the cold, you'll be able to function and help yourself and help that patient uh, chances of survival. Possibly help save a life. Help save a stuff. life. Nothing's better. Frederick, thank you so much. Thank you very much. That is such great information. Well, right now, I'm pleased to be joined by Lindsay Vandyhoof with the American Heart Association. She's our Omaha Go Red for Women director, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we heard the three words at the top of the show, be the beat. Why is that the initiative for the American Heart Association this heart month? Yeah, we want everyone, uh, every household, every family to know CPR because the likelihood of it happening in your home is so high. And um, being able to know what to do in that situation is so critical. We just saw a little bit of instruction there. Yes. It, it seems easy. Why don't you think more people know CPR? It's a scary moment, right? And you don't want to do it wrong. But we really talk about any attempt at CPR is better than no attempt at all. Um, and so that's why, you know, this month we were talking a lot about hands-only CPR. I would we be remiss if we did this whole show and, and didn't go back to, to early January when, if you were watching Monday Night Football, as mm -hmm. millions of Americans were, we saw DeMar Hamlin, Buffalo Bills safety, go into cardiac arrest in the middle of the football field, mm -hmm. and then his doctors credit him with being saved partly by CPR. Right. How has the American Heart Association uh, partnered with DeMar right. Hamlin since? Yes, I mean, he has been amazing, obviously has a servant heart and wants to give back, and we are so proud to have him as a partner with us because his 
passion for having people to learn CPR, to, to know what to do in that situation. And his Three for Heart is a great initiative. We're really excited um, to have him spreading that awareness. Um, and as you know, the three things to do is to go and learn and, and see that 90 second instructional video of hands only CPR. Um, know what to do. You can, his second thing is to go and obviously um, donate to American Heart mm -hmm. Association so that helps us continue to move our mission forward. But then lastly is his challenge of three people to you know spread that awareness and make sure others know how what to do in that situation. I heard you mention hands only CPR. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a change just yeah. in the last several years with a focus of hands only mm -hmm. whereas maybe when I was a child and I first learned about it there were the breaths. Mm -hmm. Why the change? So hands only CPR um, it's it is designed by the American Heart Association to increase the likeliness of people being able to to perform CPR in an emergency situation. Um, we don't want people to be afraid to act, and I think this is a way where, again, that 90-second instructional video, you can see um, it is easy to learn, and just by watching the video, you may not feel confident um, in doing it, but we actually have at West Roads Mall a mannequin and a kiosk mm -hmm, set up yeah. that you can practice those compressions, and it interacts with you and lets you know if you're doing the compressions correctly at the right pace and at the right depth. Because it has to be fast mm -hmm. and probably a little bit firmer than, yes, than, than, than people realize. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about Go Red for Women. Yes. Why is that such an important cause in our community? I, I know so many women have heart disease. Yes, with um, just, you know, the one in three women that are living with, you know, cardiovascular disease and making sure that we have this opportunity to spread awareness. Um, when I first started with the American Heart Association, which wasn't too long ago, the first thing I did was call my mother and my two sisters, um, making sure they knew, you know, the, the, the risks, that their number one health risk is cardiovascular disease. And so I'm very passionate about being able to do something to help not only people in my family, my, the women in my life, but here in our community. And we have an amazing group of women that help us every year raising awareness, raising dollars for Go Red for Women. American Heart Association is such a great organization. I know that firsthand. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank you. All right, next on Chronicle, it's the diagnosis one in about every 125 babies will get. But for parents of a newborn with congenital heart disease, Sloan, this year's Heartball Princess, is here to prove children can thrive thanks to advancements in treatment and research. You'll meet her next. First, a reminder that your comments are an important part of this show. If you want to be heard, email those comments to news at ketv.com. Remember, we love hearing from you. We'll be right back.